This is the Headless Professor video series, and today we're talking about induction, the kind of logic which is used as the method of science. Induction differs from deduction in several ways. Whereas deduction starts with a few general ideas or categories and then makes specific applications, Induction starts with specific observable facts and then generalizes to form some theories. Another difference is that the conclusion of valid deductive arguments is certain, whereas the conclusions of cogent inductive arguments are at best probable. Well, that leads to a very interesting question. Is inductive reasoning capable of justifying itself? The assumption, of course, in inductive reasoning is that what has been observed in the past will repeat in the future. But actually, we are assuming what we are trying to prove. Induction, although it may have worked in the past, may not necessarily work in the future, unless we assume by induction that it will. Is this self-contradiction or lack of self-justification a fatal flaw of induction? I would say that to reject induction for this reason is the height of skepticism, maintaining an unreasonable high standard of proof. What I would like to attempt to do is to justify the use of induction in a manner similar to Pascal's wager, which was used to justify the doctrine of the existence of God. Pal Pascal said that we should accept the existence of God because it was a pretty good bet. Now, if we accept the existence of God, and God does in fact exist, we've got a very good outcome because we get to go to heaven. Now, if we reject the existence of God, and God does not in fact exist, we get a good outcome because we get to have a lot of fun, don't have to worry about living a moral life. Well, suppose we really don't know for certain whether or not God exists. Then we have to compare the risks of making a wrong decision. If we accept that God exists, but he in fact does not exist, then we miss out on some fun during this life. But compare that loss, that wrong decision, to what happens if we reject God, but he in fact does exist. We go to hell. And so Pascal reasoned that it was better to accept the existence of God rather than reject the existence of God. Let's apply this approach to the use of induction. If we accept that induction works, and it does in a specific case, we've made the right decision. And of course, if we reject that induction exists, and it doesn't work in a given case, again, we've made the right decision. But consider, suppose we use induction, and it doesn't work in a particular case. We run the risk of the cost of the investigation and the technological application. But suppose we reject the use of induction when it really does work in this case. We've missed a great opportunity. Another way to view this is to ask, what is the alternative to science? Are we going to utilize different forms of pseudoscience? Where has pseudoscience been demonstrated by induction or any other means as superior to inductive science? And so for those reasons, I would say maybe we're better off sticking with induction. Indeed, 
one benefit of induction is that even when it is wrong, it may be self-correcting through a series of many successive approximations. And so I'm very much leaning toward the position of Charles Sanders Peirce that he developed in 1877, that induction should be adhered to because it approximates the truth in the long run. Therefore, the decision should be to utilize induction.